Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Big news uh, has come across on the Tesla semi truck from JB Strobel. He's announcing that Tesla will not seek a partner for their semi truck solution, they'll go it alone. He also announced that it's the equivalent of four Model S's, both engines and battery packs. This talk explores all the details that go with this change uh, that's just developed. <music> Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Bonjour, vegate trasfiche ni hao ma. French, uh, Russian, and Chinese. Today's talk focuses on the fact that the semi truck is officially coming and it won't include a partner. Tesla will build both the inside engine, component, engine components as well as exterior of the vehicle themselves. This is big news because we've been speculating on whether or not Tesla would take a partner like Mercedes on or possibly Cummins as they deliver this product. J.B. Strobel, the CTO of Tesla, as late as September at a conference announced that in essence the new truck would be the equivalent of four times Model S, both engine and battery pack. Now, I found this decision to announce 4X Model S rather interesting because the the big issue on trucks has been that since Tesla came out with lithium ion, ion batteries in vehicles or, or, or cars, places like Mercedes and others have been working hard to figure out how to create a truck product from this. Currently, the 18650 battery solution is available in a Mercedes and soon coming from Cummins and from other manufacturers. These vehicles are capable of something like a 30 or 40 ton carrying weight about 100 miles. So Tesla is also providing battery solutions, I believe, to Mercedes in this regard. The big news then is Mercedes was of the opinion that Tesla would need a partner to bring a truck to market based on the fact that they've had long-standing relationships around the world with large numbers of customers. I believe that Mercedes thought they would be the ideal and likely partner choice for Tesla. But as we reported, the, the problem with that is that if Tesla builds the battery and drivetrain the software up front, um, the only thing left to be built is sort of the exterior of the truck. And even that, Tesla has a fabrication sort of know-how from having done it for vehicles for quite a while. So, you know, they're not going to be d doing any of the, the boxes behind the truck. But in terms of everything up front, you know, take out glass, wheels, etc., you know, standard parts for any truck, and everything else will be built by Tesla. So this is actually big news because uh, for a bunch of reasons. Number one, Tesla has its hands full with the other vehicles it's producing. Number two, Tesla has its, its cash flow spread rather thin across all the other sort of things that they're currently doing. And the net result then is like, why would they want to add on another item that has to be done uh, currently and the answer would be good question another answer that comes from JB Strobel is when you take a look at the profit margins it's extremely compelling so let me give you an example now it's possible I'm not saying it's likely that if you push it the numbers on this vehicle are three battery packs at eight thousand five hundred dollars a piece plus ten grand worth of engines so 
in theory, the internal components could be as low as 40 grand for a semi that goes 300 miles, but I think it's more likely that that number will be somewhere around 55 or 60 thousand dollars. So let's take worst case scenario. At sixty thousand dollars, the vehicles is competing with trucks that cost between a hundred and let's say a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So if they came in at let's say a hundred and ten thousand dollars for their vehicle, uh, because they're offering customers three times the uh, the, the gas mileage, if you will. So uh, when a truck is moving, it gets six miles a gallon. That internal combustion engine is 30% efficient. The electric engine is 90% efficient. So in theory, you're getting three times the mileage out of it. So in theory, if you're getting six miles a gallon from a ICE or internal combustion engine, you're getting 18 miles a gallon from the Tesla vehicle. The second variable that comes up is operating costs. The ICE vehicle has 2,000 moving parts. The uh, Tesla in the truck formation, the, the, the Tesla engine has 17 moving parts. So let's say multiply by, that by four or ballpark, you know, you're talking um, 40, uh, 40 or so moving parts inside of that engine. So when you have to do any kind of repairs, including adding on regenerative braking as another variable, your operating costs are at least half, if not less. So Tesla can offer a vehicle that's comparable in price, but offers triple the mileage and half the operating costs. So all of those reductions in costs represent profit to the end users which in the early days is likely to be the largest entities out there. As we predicted, Tesla can afford to go directly to customers because when you have one-off customers, there needs to be hand-holding. But when you're dealing with the largest shippers in the world, they have fairly large uh, service and repair facilities that they will e easily expand if there's a compelling solution that they got access to, which in this case is the form of the Tesla vehicle. So when you add it all up, in theory, Tesla could make at least, you know, somewhere between fifty and seventy thousand dollars per truck and and still offer a huge amount of value to those end customers. And the bonuses of noise and pollution are minor compared, you know, is another win win for another entity, namely the environment. So when you add up all these sort of what's going on, one understands then why it is that Tesla has decided to enter the truck market uh, on its own without a partner. Uh, a partner might add relationships around the world, but um, they don't have the capacity anyway to deal with all the potential customers that want to get a hold of this. So they're really going to concentrate on working with the biggest customers because they have a lot of money and they're the easiest people to work with. Money brings up an interesting question. So one of the big unknowns is the markets have been fairly patient because they can see what Tesla is trying to do. When you see one of the problems that pops up when you start dealing with trucks is because Tesla builds 80% of their own supply chain, they don't get the benefit of having others carry inventory. So that means that they, in essence, need to do another cash raise to build up the solution that might be associated with trucks as well. Now, there's already a huge hem and cry about the amount of cash Tesla is using and has burned through. So I think th those cries will be huge when it comes to trucks as well. But if you think about it, Tesla earns 25% on cars. If they're earning between 50 and 60% on the trucks they're selling, once the investors are shown these kind of returns, I think the willingness to put in more cash and bite their tongue will definitely occur, but there will be large amounts of bitching without a doubt. So all this said is that um, 
I'm fascinated. Um, you know, Tesla is making it harder, if you will, on themselves because they could enter the class six or seven truck market right now and blow away competitors with solutions that are cheaper. They're ceding that in essence to their partners, Mercedes and others to whom they sell batteries and chasing the, the class eight semi market, uh, which only the 2170 allows to happen right now. Um, I think, you know, I have to admit when I found out about the truck and the form factors and how much money Tesla would make on it, in essence, all those truck engines that are produced are going to take away from Model 3 sales. But when you're selling stuff and getting 50% margins versus getting 25% margin on the cars, I'd have to say that I understand why Tesla's willing to piss off customers with longer waits because as those trucks roll onto the streets, they make a ton of money and they also reduce a ton of pollution, etc., that hits the world. Um, looking forward to comments that you might have. Um, and this concludes our discussion of trucks for, for this week. Uh, it is exciting news. Again, based on how Tesla operates and all the other priorities they have, I wouldn't be surprised if the the delayed truck uh, that was delayed from September to October, um, now November, I wouldn't be stunned if it delayed again. And the main reason is that at this point, the only reason for the basic consumer to know about the trucks is one, they exist, and two, their customers buying them. For Tesla to show anything to competitors about what they're doing makes no sense at all because all it does is makes the runway shorter for competitors in terms of replicating what they've done. Look forward to your comments on this. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. We can also use some help on Patreon. Tschüss, Max Gut, Oval, Hitrahot, Choda Hafez.